Hey guys, what's up? It's Pharaoh here, and this is the second installment of my Let's Talk Tactics series. Today, I'm very excited because I'm going to be talking about my personal favorite, the Goliath. The Goliath is big, he's bad, he's mean, he's strong, extremely durable, highly mobile. There's nothing to not like about this guy. I've played, I'd say, 90% of my matches as the Goliath, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. There's very many different ways to play the Goliath. I'm going to focus on the main two that I use. Usually, I start with Leap Smash, with two points in that, and Flame Breath. The reason I do this is because Leap Smash is incredibly effective at clearing the neutral monsters that you need to eat to evolve, like you see me doing here. It's also a very powerful tool to use when fighting the Hunters. And Fire Breath gives you some utility with its range and is good for also silently clearing the neutral monsters. Those are the main two abilities I run with. Sometimes I take charge for the extra mobility if I want to try a style of running and eating constantly. But for most of these videos, I'm going to be sneaking, so you'll see me take Leap Smash and Fire Breath. Now perks, as far as perks go, I'm fairly convinced that damage resistance is the best all around perk. If you want to try a style that's more running, eating, I do like to go leap and charge and take feeding speed and you can clear camps extremely quickly and easily and eat them before the hunters even know you're there. Smell range would also be a good choice if you enjoy the extra vision it provides and you like sneaking around. Both builds are perfectly legitimate and equally viable in my opinion. I just have grown accustomed to uh, sneaking and pouncing and I'm going to cover a lot of the tactics that I employ when doing this. So without any further ado, let's get started. We're talking about misdirection and here you can see I'll be running in one direction, leaving tracks and making the hunters believe I went one way before I sneak turn, change course, and proceed a different direction. I climb up to change levels and further obscure my tracks, and at this point I know I'm probably pretty safe to go ahead and just start eating, because the hunters are going to be following the wrong trail. When employing this tactic, which I use at the beginning of every game, it's very important you always look at your mini-map so you know where a good spot is to mislead the hunters. In this instance, I run this way stop to make it look as if I jumped off the cliff and I immediately do a U-turn and go around the rock, which I know this large rock formation will give me cover as I proceed back the other way. Now I'm more or less free to eat all the wildlife I can find without too much worry of the hunters finding me. The only time I'm usually discovered is when they have a daisy that can sniff out tracks. Whenever you stop to kill a monster and you come out of sneak mode, you begin leaving tracks again, which Daisy can sniff out. So you have to be careful. Another note, it's always very important to sneak so you can sneak by birds. However, every now and again when you eat monsters, whether you're sneaking or not, sometimes you will attract birds. And in that instance, you're just going to want to usually do what I call going loud and use your leap, your charge, whatever, just to get the furthest distance away from your last location to begin sneaking again. The importance of sneaking and misleading the enemy cannot be overstated. You'll notice two things I do very consistently in order to aid me in this is use my minimap and always use smell whenever I can. Here I notice the hunters have stumbled close to my location, but I stay in sneak mode and I hide behind this large metal structure. I can tell they don't actually know where I am, they just assume I'm in the nearby area. So I choose to just wait it out. This is also where knowing your opponent's team composition can come into play, because I know they don't have anyone who can throw dust or Daisy who can sniff me out, and I'm safe sitting where I'm at. So now that we've gone over the basics of sneaking, let's talk about what we can do with it. So far I've only mentioned sneaking as a defensive ability, but in reality it's a very useful offensive one as well. Very often you can catch a player out from his team and pin him down and without any of his teammates to free him, he's an easy kill. If you've already killed several members of your team, it's also an incredibly useful ability to run down those last few pesky noobs. 
This is referred to as a sneak attack, but I often call it a pounce because it only takes a split second of being in sneak mode to activate. You'll see here I basically walk right up to the guy, crouch, and pounce on him just to make sure he doesn't get away. Some people might claim this tactic is currently glitched, cheap, or overpowered, but at least we're not playing the Wraith, right? Now that we've got a handle on sneaking, pouncing, how to get around, let's talk about how to use the environment and the wildlife to our advantage. I'll tell you right now, I very rarely will eat any of the big red monsters unless I'm very desperate for energy or for shield. Why? Because those monsters are more of a threat to the hunters than they are to you. Very often you can sneak right by them, and in this case, this dune beetle even takes out a bunch of wildlife for me, and all I have to do is sit around hiding and feed on all the tasty snacks he just left lying around. Thanks, Mr. Beetle. Now I understand we can't always rely on the big baddies to be a delivery service, but what we can do is use them as our allies whenever we can. If you're being chased down by hunters, you can simply leap right by them, and the hunters have to run through them, and they risk taking a lot of damage. Or, if the hunters are pursuing you, putting those big monsters between you and the hunters is a great way to deter them from trying to fight you. Here we have one of the big tall, uh, we'll call it a giraffe looking thing, and the dune beetle. And I know with these in the vicinity, the hunters are not going to be very safe to fight me, even though I'm still level 1. But I look at these big guys as my allies, so I decide to hang around. But like a bitter ex-girlfriend, this dune beetle decides to bite me in the ass, which isn't a big deal because I'm still hidden and it's relatively easy to drop the aggro. Now the game of cat and mouse that we're playing becomes a lot more tilted in my favor because I have these mobs that are going to attack the hunters as they pursue me. So I just make sure to keep this pillar between them and me and let the monsters do their work. You can see one guy is already half health. So if they choose to initiate a fight, which they do, and they lose, they've already played into my hand and given me the advantage, thanks to my buddies, the wildlife. The hunters will be very eager to chase you, so make use of that. Make them run to a place that isn't an optimal location for them to fight. After you engage, they're gonna drop the dome, and hopefully you've located an area where you can use one of your buddies. In this case, I knock the medic down into the river, where one of my trap jaw friends just happens to be waiting. This is another huge strength of the Goliath. His abilities are so strong, they have the effect of displacing your enemies, so use them to affect their position. You can see here, I'm gonna knock the medic away with a rock, and it should knock her right back into the jaws of that trap jaw. Now, She's separated from her team, and as I charge over, I can finish her off, and there's a huge monster between them and their medic friend. Thank you, Trapped Jaw. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me! Sorry about that, I just couldn't resist. Well, that's it for part one of the Goliath edition of Let's Talk Tactics. Part two will be coming soon, and it'll cover combat mechanics and strategies. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the videos. Check out some of my other videos, and I will see you guys next time.